Friends, brothers and sisters, today's liturgy reminds us of how God has continually loved his people after him creating us in his image and likeness, creating us for the best we his children. God has always accompanied us and taken always the first initiative. We see that even after the fallenness of our forefathers, especially Adam and Eve, when they fell because of sin and everything was seemed to be crushed to the ground and we did not have hope, we see that God never abandoned his people. He has always been accompanying them. And we saw already that in the genealogy, there were many of the people who prepared the coming of the Messiah. And each one had his own story. And so today we are concentrating, the liturgy of today is concentrating on the birth of Samson. Samson, one of the great legendary, the great Israel warrior, a fighter, a great judge who came in to fight for God's people, Israel, so that they may be victorious always with the Lord. And this is found in the first reading of Judges chapter 13. We see that even this birth of Samson, the great warrior, the great fighter, who stood to protect his people from all the harm of the enemies, thanks to the intervention of God, was born of a woman who was sterile. She was sterile. She couldn't give birth and they had really tried the best they can and they couldn't give birth. And we see the angel of the Lord appearing to this woman and assuring her and the husband that they will have a child. And who is born after that? It is Samson, the great warrior, the great fighter who protects. And because this woman opens up and receives the angel who speaks to her that message of comfort, the message that takes away the shame, what any woman would have if she doesn't have the children and she has tried the best she can, the Lord takes away the shame through the angel. The same episode is seen in today's gospel of Luke chapter 1, verses 5 to 25. The birth of the great John the Baptist is announced. Is announced to Zechariah. And is announced to Zechariah, shared with Elizabeth the wife. Both are advanced in age. Let's understand the context, dear friends. In this moment, Zechariah was a priest who was always going for prayers in the temple to pray to God. And imagine in all the years he was serving the Lord, pray, offering incense. Let my prayer rise to you, O God, like incense. Offering incense, offering prayers for him and for the family and for the rest of the, his own people, God's people. So he would go in the temple, offer prayers to the Lord every day, every day. Now this time it was his turn to go deeper into the sanctuary, which is the Holy of Holies, where, which is reserved only for priests. And this is where deeply he went and continued to offer the prayers on behalf of the people. So the people outside were praying. How beautiful it is, this image, dear friends. That's for our priests, those religious leaders of ours, as they go to pray, do we pray for them? Do we pray with them so that with them, the prayers can rise to God? These people, the priests, we the priests, are sustained by you, the rest of the faithful. We are sustained by your prayers. That's why even when the priest says, let us pray, he collects, we call that prayer collect. Let us pray, oremos, so that he can collect all your intentions. There's a pause, let us pray, there's a silence. So that he can collect all the intentions of the rest of the people who have come to pray and forward them to God. After the pause, he allows people to really reflect on the intentions they have had in the mass. Dear friends, whenever we have come for the prayers, we should have an intention for us, but also for our family members, 
for the people we work with, the people who are troublesome, even for our enemies, and for the rest of God's people who are struggling in life, even for those who hate us. We have to have that intention, if possible, even many intentions. So every time we go for prayer, we should have an intention. I am praying for this person who is hurting me. I'm praying for this person who loves me so much and he offers me. I'm saying praying for this person who is helping me in different ways. So we see in the best episode of today, as Zachariah goes deeper into the holy of holies to pray, which was reserved for priests, and he continues to pray to God, raising his mind and heart to God, praying, interceding, asking for God's intercession for the people. The people are also praying. And they were outside praying seriously for Zechariah, but also for themselves. Let's pray for our priests. Let's pray for our religious leaders. But let's pray for each other as well. When we do this, then we make sure that the Lord changes our hearts and he changes the hearts even of our enemies to realize the bad things they are doing so that they turn to good. At their own time, we should not be in a hurry to get the answers received. What we should do is that we continue doing good to these enemies. We continue doing good to each other. We continue praying. So we continue praying as we do good. Now, Zechariah in the temple is praying. And the Lord hears the intention of his heart. He hears the intention of his heart and assures Zechariah that the wife, Elizabeth, will have a child. Oh, oh, no, Lord, don't joke like this. First of all, the Zachari- Zachariah and the wife Elizabeth are advancing age. They are very old. Secondly, the wife is sterile. Sterile means he cannot give la- a bath. He cannot have a child. He cannot have a child. There is no possibility of conceiving. And now, they have tried several times and they never conceived. And it, has, it was confirmed that Elizabeth was sterile. Now, God, you are telling me that Zachariah um, and the, the Elizabeth will have ch- a child that Elizabeth at her old age. So that's why Zachariah, though he has a belief and strong faith, he questions, I said, wait a bit, but um, what is sign is really there? Yes, it's like saying, I don't, I don't believe. It's when you know, you know that, that news, when the Lord speaks to us through different people and we don't expect something comes up and you, you remain up, you don't even know what to say. So he also questions God, but wait a bit, what is happening here? And God, tells him, he, he keeps him dumb, he cannot speak, keeps his mouth shut. Because with the Lord, we have to be silent in order to allow him to speak. When the Lord is speaking, we have to be silent and listen from inside. Listen and discern and see the good things we can do afterwards. So he keeps him, it's like saying, keep quiet, let me speak now. Keep quiet, let me speak. Lord, increase our faith. Let increase our faith. And keep, keep on working on miracles in us. There where we don't see your intervention. There we, where we feel we, there is no way out. We feel blocked. We feel our prayers are not answered. Lord, show us this. A beautiful sign. Not the one of keeping, uh, uh, keeping us dumb as it was for Zechariah. But at least give us a beautiful sign to, which shows that you are with us always. But even if we don't, you don't give us the sign immediate and we don't see it immediately, uh, help us to believe that you are with us and we know that you are working out everything. Dear friends, when we are in the silence, we shall see the signs that God is working in us. We shall see them in ourselves, we shall see them even in others. So Zechariah is, remains down. And when he, he comes out, people who are praying for him and imagine that, yes, he had a vision. God has spoken to him, but he couldn't speak. Yeah, because with God, we have to be silent. It's God who will speak to us when we are silent, not because when there is full of noise. Sometimes we accumulate many noise inside us and it all disorganizes us. The Lord says, no, some noise, keep it at distance. People who are shouting at you, keep them at distance for a while. People who are always looking for negatives, keep them at distance. People who want to hurt you, keep them at distance. It doesn't mean that you are ignoring them, no. For the time being, I need my peace. So, but for the moment, I feel like maybe I need to be with myself and my God to know how I can now respond to you who are shouting at me. Sometimes silence, and many times silence speaks a lot. It is in the silence that God will speak to us. Because, and it is in the silence that we will know what we have to do and how to act. Otherwise, when there is noise in us, when there is there is turmoil, there is earthquakes in us, always we are accumulating. The mind is full of many worries, many things that are bombarded. The heart is all full. There is no even place for forgiveness. We keep now pointing, looking, making small mistakes big. 
And so in the silence, Zachariah has a sign that he has, God has to speak and with actions and Zach, Zachariah has to keep silence. So when he comes out of his people who are looking at him and he had a vision and people begin praising the Lord when they see all this happening. And this is a sign that John the Baptist will be born, will prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah and the, the salvation through John the Baptist, salvation will reach the rest of the world because it's him who will prepare the way of the Lord, the coming of the Lord. He will announce the coming of Jesus Christ who will be born now through Mary, through Mary uh, when also the angel appeared. Dear friends, we have a message to get clear here right now. There are many angels around us, angels that challenge us when we do things that are not right. They have the courage to tell us, no, 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 here this thing will take away your peace. We have these angels who encourage us to do good and discourage us not to not to mix us with evil and badness because that evil it breaks us down and breaks our life and the lives of others down. So we have these angels who encourage us to do good and avoid evil. We have these angels who are always accompanying us in our journey. Some are very young, some are very, some are advanced in age, some are little. These angels are there. They help us. God speaks. Maybe he will not speak to us directly through an angel. Maybe it will happen like it happened with the, the birth of Samson and the birth of John the Baptist. It may happen directly that God speaks to us through an angel. But many times God speaks to us through human angels, through you and me, the human angels. God speaks to us. His message of encouragement, but it's also his message that corrects us to get back on the right track, to find again the peace and the joy of, the, of what it means to belong to the Father. We, the children, should be always at peace, uh, to be uh, always serene, happy, in harmony with with ourselves, with others, and with God. And God uh, brings forth angels to remind us that be at peace, be at ease. The Lord wants us to be peaceful, to be happy already now and in the next world to come. The Lord wants us to be happy. And there are angels who remind us of our true happiness. And he tells, they have the courage also to tell us when things are not going on well. Please, let us not throw stones at people who are trying the best they can to challenge us, to challenge us to do good, to correct us. Let's not throw, let's thank them that they have the courage. Otherwise, there are people who can easily also get discouraged. Of course, they are correcting us not because they are the best, but because they want the best from us. They are challenging, challenging us, correcting us, maybe because we have not seen the, where the pit we are going to fall into, but they have seen that and they want us not to fall into that pit. Now imagine how we can sometimes repay back these people who are correcting us, who are challenging us. But at the same time, we, should, we are all invited to be those angels that continue encouraging those angels who are continually positive, who look at the bright side of life, who always look at the white wall, which is many blessings, not the small spot. And we make it magnified as if everything is those, that small spot. And forget about the many blessings. We, those angels that encourage us, we are supposed to be like that. So there are many angels who come to us in human form. But we also are called to be those angels who reach out for others. To encourage them, to correct them, to be, so that they also experience the presence of the Lord. But in order to receive the message from the angels, we need silence. We need to discern. And when we receive a message, whatever message from the many angels we hear around us, it could be uh, the ch our children, it could be our the husband, the wife, it could be our friends. Uh, or it could be any people or even whom we don't know. It could be even in some situation. So all these messages that are coming from different areas, when they come to us, they have to go through the process of discernment. And that process of discernment happens when I am able to, to be quiet, to be silent, to listen to myself, to listen to that message which has come. Let's receive as many messages as we can, but then let the process of silence help us to know, yes, this message is good and I have to assimilate it. This message is not good, I have to keep it away. But let's face the messages that they come. Even if some people give us strong messages, let's have the courage to call them and see maybe there is a truth in those strong messages. God is speaking to my brother, my sister, because the same God, the spirit of the same Lord is working through also my brothers and sisters around me. 
And so God is working through the spirit of the Lord that is in your heart, in my heart, in the hearts of my brothers and sisters around me. So we should go through that process of discerning. Is this really what God is speaking to me? This person has told me this, but do I feel this is the right thing to do right now? Oh, if it's yes, yes, do it, do it, do it. If it's not, listen to it again. If it's not and you're convinced it's not, keep it away. Because if it is good, it will do good to me and good, good, good to others. If it's not good, it will do harm to me and disorganize me and disorganize automatically those around me. Let us be people who only uh, have the courage to be angels that reach out to others and have the courage to tell others good things, many blessings, many things, good things that are happening positively. But at the same time to be angels that also challenge the people when things are not going on well so that they can change and be at peace. At the same time, let us be angels ourselves who also are able to re understand the work of God who is working in us every moment. God is speaking to us in deep in our hearts, inviting us to be angels. Let's open our hearts. Zechariah was able to know that God was speaking to him because he opened his heart as he has always been doing. Though he doubted, but he opened his heart. May we pray that the Lord may help us to open our heart to see the many beautiful messages that is passing on to us every moment, even right now. God is speaking to us in many ways through different people and is passing many beautiful messages. May he allow us to assimilate these messages and receive them and enjoy them and share these good messages to others. May we at the same time also help others in their challenges in order to make the world a better place. My dear brother, my dear sister, are you an angel that shares good news to others? Are you an angel that reaches out to help others, to encourage them, but also to challenge them? If you do that, you are a real prophet. A prophet is one who speaks on behalf of God. And he speaks not because he just speaks words here and there, but because he feels this is what God is speaking to him in his conscience, especially based on the word of God. God bless you. Take care.